A VRF is a virtual routing table. We saw it working with static routes in part one, and now it's time to see it with dynamic routing. We're going to configure VRF aware OSPF, EIGRP, and BGP. We're going to take the first topology we worked on, that's the one without the firewall, and expand on it. Customer A wants to run OSPF. Customer B wants to run EIGRP. We're going to make that happen. We'll start on the core router by finding and removing static routes for customer A that we created in the last video. Now we'll enable the OSPF process. When we enter into the OSPF configuration, we specify the VRF that we want to interact with. We also configure the router ID and advertise the transit network. This is part of the normal OSPF configuration, it's nothing specific to VRF. Now we can bring up the customer router and we'll work on the OSPF there. The first step is to change the OSPF network type on the loopback interfaces. The network type needs to be set to point to point. This is because of some strange OSPF behavior. This is not VRF specific. If we don't set the network type on loopback interfaces, only the slash 32 address on the loopbacks will be advertised, not the entire slash 24. So this is not something that you'll normally want to do in the real world. This is more of a, a lab type thing. Now we can start the OSPF process and advertise our networks. As soon as we advertise that transit network, the neighbor relationship forms with the core router. Now back on the core router, we can see the customer router as a neighbor. No special VRF commands are required for this. We can also see the routes in the OSPF database. And if we look in the global routing table, we can still see that it is empty as expected. The VRF has learned the customer routes. And finally, we confirm connectivity with ping. Now it's time to get customer B configured with EIGRP. The first step is finding and removing the old static routes. And we're going to EIGRP configuration. If I can get this command right. You'll probably notice that we're using EIGRP in named mode. This is relatively new and the way of the future, so that's why I'm using it here. In EIGRP, we specify the VRF under the address family. In named mode, we also need to use an autonomous system number. Once we're in that subconfiguration, we can advertise the transit network. And we need to configure the customer router as well. As you expect, there's no need for VRF config here. We do, however, still need the address family. This is a requirement of name mode. As soon as we advertise the transit network, we see the relationship coming up. And while we're here, we also advertise the rest of the networks. We can verify that this is working back on the core router. Here we can verify that the customer router is a neighbor. We do need to specify the VRF when we're using EIGRP commands. The topology database also has the routes that we need. These routes are also in the customer's VRF. And finally, a ping confirms that we have connectivity. Customer B has just informed us that they would like to connect to their WAN. We don't own the customer's WAN router ourselves, so we would like to use eBGP to peer with it. Our AS number is 65000 and theirs is 65001. As usual, the basic config is done, which you can download from the website. We'll start by looking at the WAN router. There are no VRFs over here, so normal BGP config is required. That includes bringing up the BGP process, configuring a neighbor, and advertising the networks. The really interesting config happens back on the core router. BGP is very complex, so to support it, we need to set up a unique identifier on each VRF that BGP interacts with. This identifier is called a route distinguisher. I'll explain more about how this works later, but for now, 
Just be aware that it makes VRF routes unique in the BGP database. We'll also create a loopback interface so BGP can have a router ID. Now to configure BGP itself. VRFs are also configured as part of an address family. When we configure a neighbor here, the peering comes up. As you would expect, we also have to advertise the customer and transit networks into the WAN. At this point, the customer router will not be able to reach the WAN. Why? Because it hasn't learned the routes yet. To fix this, we go back into EIGRP and redistribute BGP. As we're using named mode, we need to go into the topology base subconfiguration mode. If you've redistributed routes into EIGRP before, you may previously have set the metric to all ones. This doesn't work anymore in named mode, so we need to be a bit smarter with the metric. If we want traceroute to work, we also need to advertise the WAN transit link. Now to verify, let's start by looking at the BGP neighbors. This uses the show IP BGP VPN v4 command when VRFs are involved. As far as BGP is concerned, these are no longer simply IPv4 routes. Remember how we added a route distinguisher into the VRF? This changes how the prefix looks in the BGP database. So now it is known as a VPN v4 prefix. You know what? We'll go into detail on that in the next video. Well, we can see that the neighbor is up and we've received prefixes. Let's have a look at the routes. Just bear with me a moment. I'm having trouble remembering the exact syntax when VRFs are involved. Aha, uh -huh. okay, I've got it. We don't use the IP keyword with VRF. As I was just saying, these are not IP routes anymore. They're VPN v4 routes. And you can tell this because the route distinguisher is set, which we can see here. The routes have successfully been installed in the routing table. And ping is also fine. We should also check that the customer has access to the WAN. The WAN routes have been learned. Notice that they're EIGRP external routes as they were redistributed from BGP. Ping also works, so we have connectivity. Let's try a traceroute. When iOS uses traceroute, it uses DNS to look up each hop, which makes it exceedingly slow. I'm going to speed this up a little bit by disabling DNS with the no IP domain lookup command. And now we can definitely see that the traffic is going through the core router to the WAN. As we've been going through this, I've mentioned a few times that VRFs are local. One router does not even know if another router is using VRFs or not. But what happens if your core network has many routers? We can make it a bit simpler by using BGP. This is where route distinguishers and route targets come in. And guess what? We're going to make that happen in the next video.